Hello, and welcome to the Virtual Population Lab. This is Ms. Forsyth, and I'm going to walk you through how to complete this assignment. So what you'll see here is I have two screens open. On the right-hand side, I have the website, which is for the Virtual Population Lab. And over here on the right side, I have the document, which you will write your answers to from the Virtual Population Lab. Okay, um, so the goals and objectives are here. First thing you need to do is answer your pre-lab questions. So open up the document over here and the pre-lab questions. So the first question you can find by just um, reading through this little reading section over here. Okay, tells us a little bit about um, how the perime paramecium itself grow. Um, so you can read through there, but you can just write down. They grow exponentially, which means they continue to grow and grow and grow. So they start off slow and all of a sudden whew, it keeps going higher and higher and higher. Okay. The objectives you're going to summarize are up here at the top. So these are your two objectives. So you just need to summarize those on your own words for number two. Number three, you're going to make a hypothesis. So right here in gray, I've already provided you with the basics for a hypothesis. All you need to do is fill in everything in the parentheses. So for example, with, once you know how paramecium grow, you should be able to predict what's going to happen when they grow alone versus together. Okay. Um, and there also is a little bit of notes in the recording from 3, 6, and 317 in which we did this lab together. Okay, um, so first thing that you got to do is when you're setting it up or you just make your hypothesis first, we're going to set up a test tube that has paramecium caudatum by itself. We're going to have a test tube that has paramecium aurelia by itself and then we will have a test tube with both samples included. Okay, in the bottom you can see there's little like, looks like little grains. It is grains. They're little rice grains down here in the bottom and that's going to be the food source. So each of the tubes has the same food source. We're keeping our variables controlled and then we're going to just be adding or changing the type of paramecium. Okay, so when we're growing them alone, what's going to happen? So make your prediction and tell me why. So why would they, if you understand how they grow, you'd write down how they're going to grow, okay? And then why does that happen? Because why would that happen, okay? Can give you the answers for those ones. Again, if you want some more help with that section of your hypothesis, you can refer to the, the recording from 3-16, March 16th of class, okay? So make your prediction how they're going to grow alone versus together. And again, this is a guess, so it doesn't have to be correct. Okay, just make sure you have it done. The next step is to actually collect your data. So I'm going to show you how to complete the lab. Um, I'll start out and do collect data for the first two days, then I'll kind of pause and skip around until we're at the end, and then we'll look at our CER, or conclusions down at the bottom. Okay, so to set it up, you're going to take one pipette. You have to click it to fill it up, and then you're going to drag it over to the first test tube. Same thing with our second sample of paramecium. That goes in the second test tube. And then you're going to take both samples again one more time, and this one they're going to go in the third test tube. And you'll notice when you're filling them, little cards at the bottom explain what kind of samples are in here. Okay, so those are telling you at the bottom. Once you have your setup, you're going to click the microscope on the back table, and that will bring you back to view these samples. So the new setup is over here, and it's a pretty basic process for how you want to do this. Once you have your, once you're back at this back counter with the microscope. You first are going to grab some clean slides because we're going to be making a wet mount, which it does right here. So you have to grab clean slides. You take your sample and it fills out and it automatically puts the cover slip on it for you. And then we're just going to take each sample and put it under the microscope. So you click the sample and drag it to the microscope. And the view will show up right here in this circle. So we can see, um, and this is day zero, P. Caudatum has one cell, one paramecium cell. So then you'd record that data on your chart. So then your, this is your lab sheet, go down to your chart and put one. Okay, then once you're finished, you're going to grab the next slide, which would be your second test tube. And this one contains the paramecium aurelia, also day zero. This number is not how many you see, this is just the, the slide number. So this is from sample one, two versus three. Okay, so you can see day zero, P. aurelia by itself, there was just one. So also you record a one. Okay, and then the next two columns on your lab sheet are going to go for the third sample because remember those are grown together. So um, you will grab the next sample, slide it over here, it'll switch it out, and you can see it's they're grown together because it shows you both samples on the um, on the card sheet. Okay, so you can see there's one and one. So you just write that down right here. One caudatum, which is the long skinny ones, and one of the aurelia, which is the longer ones or the rounder ones. Okay, so you've got your first row filled out. Once you finish collecting that data, okay, you are going to um, clean your slides. Nope, sorry. 
turn your grid on. Oh, down here at the bottom. Whoa! Down here at the bottom of this lab sheet. Clear your slides. That's what I was looking for. And then you are going to flip the calendar day so it goes into your next day. So this is like expediting this process. So now you've looked at day two of the lab and you're gonna, again, clean microscope slides, take a sample, and now you've got new samples there. You do the same process repeating over and over again. So now you take your first slide, do, 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 collect your data. Oh look, day two, I have one, two, three, four. Put a number four in the chart, okay? And you're gonna repeat this whole process so your whole chart is filled out. I'll give you a hint when you get down towards the end, you definitely want to make sure you have your grid on because counting the paramecium within these samples is very difficult because there's like a lot of them. So when you're getting into your further days, you're going to want to make sure you use that grid so that way you can count and be accurate. So you can say, oh, okay, I did the first four boxes, I'm doing the next four, etc. You do have to count all of them. So don't just count one box and try and multiply. No. Okay, count all of the cells you see. Um, so again, that was the, that was the P. catatum, same thing, one, two, three, four, five, six for P. aurelia. You go and put that in your chart. And then same thing when you look at the third slide. In this case, you gotta make sure you're really, so look, one, two, three, four, five of the P. aurelia. Nope, sorry, P. catatum. And one, two, three of the aurelia. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing again. Clear the slides, flip the day, clean slides, take sample, and repeat. Okay, so next thing you're going to do, now we're at day 16. At day 16 of this, you're going to count again. So I just collected my data for all the other days. And now you can see why you'd want to have the grid on. So we can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Oh my goodness, it's like it's the same number again. That's convenient. Um, we're going to get the next one. Whoa, this one has a lot more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 4, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 49. Oh my goodness. Okay. And then we got to do the same process with this one. Oh no, there's no peak out of them. So that one's easy. Zero there. And the same thing again. So I can't see all the way at the top when I scroll up. There we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49. Whew. Okay. As I told you, the end gets a little harder. So now you've got your data collected. For number five, you're going to explain how you test it. So just in your own words, how did you get this setup complete? How did you collect all this data? Um, it should be about, yeah, I'd say three to five sentences. Okay, I did this, we did this, and then we graphed every single, or we counted the data for every single day. Okay. The second, the next part is creating the results. Okay, so graphing the results can be a little trickier. Um, I will show you quickly how to make a graph in Microsoft Word. Um, once you finish collecting your data, you're pretty much done with the investigation part here. So I'm going to close that out for you and make this a little bigger so that way we can focus on just the lab document. Okay, so once you have your data in here, you're going to create a graph for P. caudatum alone. So easy way to do it is insert and then you click on chart. Okay, now once you click on a chart, you want to make it a bar chart for sure. I'm sorry, a line graph. That's you're going to make a line graph. Okay, and it's going to be a single line graph, but you're just going to click the first one that you show that you see, line graph. Okay, um, you can make it with the points if you want. It doesn't really matter which kind of graph you have. It's the same basic overview. Okay, so I'm just going to click on one of the points that way you can see it easily. Click on OK, and once you do that, a little chart will pop up, and then this is the data table you're going to use. So you want to keep that open. You can click back to your document, and then you're just going to go and copy the data. So the categories are going to be the days. Okay, because as you can see on your chart, oopsies, when you scroll down here, categories are across the bottom. So the days are what we're looking at, how much it's changed over time. So you can actually copy all this information into the chart. So you can just go day, and since we have to do this first one alone, you can copy that first part also. So control, 
copy, control C, that's what you have to press, and you can actually paste that right into the document. What? Isn't that awesome? And then right here for the series number, you want to change that to what we're actually recording data on. So you're going to copy that for the series. And then another trick is when you are collecting the data, this little line right here, that line's going to always show the rest. So you want to drag that over because you only have one set of data. Once you do that, you have your one set of data, and you can actually go and delete these two columns. And when you do that, you can go look. Whoops. You can go look on your document to make sure your graph is properly made. Oh, yeah, you can see over those days, it, it grew and grew and grew, and then all of a sudden it stopped growing. That is called the spot on the graph right here. The spot on the graph right here is called your carrying capacity. So you can visually see very quickly P. catatum reached its carrying capacity at day eight. Okay, You repeat the same process, but now you're going to insert the data for P. aurelia. So again, I'm um, sorry, insert chart. And again, I'm going to try to get the same kind of line chart. You want to do a line graph, and then I'll do the same kind of graph. Click OK. You'll get the same thing popping up. So you'll just have to, go, again, go and copy your data from the graph or from your chart. So again, I'm going to copy all your days so you don't have to re-put those in. Copy, copy, copy. And you can also left-click, left-click, or right-click, sorry. Copy, and then come up here, right-click, and then paste. Okay? And then, again, for these ones, you don't need these two, so you can delete those. Just make sure once you've deleted them, you um, drag this little black arrow that you see. Oops. Oh, let me do it right there. There you go drag that over so you only have one set of data to look at. And then you still have to plug in the data for P. Aurelia. So now you can go over to P. Aurelia and you can actually copy this whole column. Control C. Come over here. Control V. And make sure it's the correct data. Okay. Should be done. And then if you just X that, you should double check your graph. Make sure it looks good. Ooh, looks really good. So P. Aurelia definitely hit its carrying capacity a little earlier. You can see it went up to about, and your graph might look a little different than mine. That's totally fine. Same process all over again. So now this this case, though, you're going to have two lines because this is our um, mixed culture. So again, insert, uh, where is it, chart, line. Okay. And then in this time, you're going to just do the same process again. Go back up to your data table. And this is a good tool for you to know how to do for future labs because we will be inserting charts into future labs. Okay, paste it. And then in this case, you're going to insert these two columns of data because we want to make sure both of this is getting put in there. So copy. And that's going to go right here. And then, uh oh, wait, hold on. I'm going to do, I didn't insert that the right spot. There we go. Paste them. And then make sure you come over here and eliminate that last section so that way that's not graphed. I think that's good. Just clear this last row that I don't have anything in there. Okay, and then we can check out our graphs. We should be able to see a serious difference between them. So you can see right here, as one went up, what happened to the other? That one just started to decrease. So this right here illustrates the law of competitive exclusion. So for the chart title for this one, this is going to be your mixed culture. Okay. All right, and then once you're finished, you go and make some claims. So what day did the paramecium reach its carrying capacity? So go back to your graph. Which day did it level out? So on your graph, which day do you see this line getting relatively flat? It might go up and down a little bit, but it, it's pretty straight across. So you're going to figure out which day it is. Use your graph to easily figure that one out. And then write that for your answer for number seven. Same thing for number eight. Go back up to your Pirelia graph. Here's your Pirelia graph. You'll notice it should be probably a day or two sooner, or two or four days sooner than your other one. You can notice that on the graph. Record that down. And then what were the differences? So what did you notice about the two cultures? So did one grow faster? Did one grow slower? You should notice that right away when you look at the carrying capacity and how quickly they went up versus the other one going up. Okay. Um, so the, the exponential growth is a little faster in one than the other. So make sure you tell me which one it is and um, how you know that to so use evidence. And last, or last two questions, the differences in growth patterns. 
um, when they're grown alone. So why does this one actually grow, whereas when they're grown together, it dies off? Hmm, interesting. And then when they were mixed, does this support the law or the principle of competitive exclusion? So if you watch the recording from 316 or you took notes on it, competitive exclusion means one species um, basically competes for a niche, or in this case, a food source. So they're both competing for the rice food source, and one ends up winning. So you can tell from the graph which one won. I'm not going to say the answer, but you can see. And which one obviously did not because it died out and its population went to zero. Okay? And that's the basics of your lab. If you are still having questions with it, please email your teachers, and we are more than willing to help you with this. I hope that helped. Have a great day.